Hi guys, I'm back. Today I'm going to read Exodus 29 to 34, Proverbs 12, and Psalm 105. Let's get started. Now this is what you shall do to them to consecrate them, that they may serve me as priests. Take one bowl of the herd and two rams without blemish, and unleavened bread, unleavened cakes mixed with oil, and unleavened waffles smeared with oil. You shall make them a fine wheat flour. You shall put them in one basket and bring them in the basket, and bring the bull and the two rams. You shall bring Aaron and his sons to the entrance of the tent of meeting, and wash them with water. Then you shall take the garments, and put on Aaron the coat and the robe of the ephod, and the ephod, and the breastpiece, and gird him with a skillfully woven band of the ephod. And you shall set the turban on his head, and put the holy crown on the turban. You shall take the anointing oil, and pour it on the his head, and anoint him. Then you shall bring his son, and put coats on them. And you shall gird Aaron and his sons with sashes, and bind caps on them. And the priesthood shall be theirs by a statue forever. Thus you shall ordain Aaron and his sons. Then you shall bring the bull before the tent of meeting. Aaron and his sons shall lay their hands on the head of the bull. And then you shall kill the bull before the Lord at the entrance to the tent of meeting. And you shall take part of the blood of the bull and put it on the horns of the altar with your finger. And the rest of the blood you shall pour out at the base of the altar. And you shall take all the fat that covers the entrails, and the long lobe of the liver, and the two kidneys with the fat that is on them, and burn them on the altar. Let the flesh of the bull and his skin and his dung you shall burn with fire outside the camp. It is a sin offering. And you shall take one of the rams, and Aaron and his son shall take their hands on the head of the ram. And you shall kill the ram, and take his son, shall take his blood, and throw it against the side of the altar. And you shall cut the ram into pieces, and wash its, in, wash its entrails and its legs, and put them with its pieces in it head and burn the whole ram on the altar it is a burnt offering to the Lord and it is a pleasing aroma a food offering to the Lord you shall take the other ram and Aaron and his son shall lay their hands on the head of the ram and you shall kill the ram and take part of its blood and put it on the tip of the right ear of Aaron and on the tips of the right ears of his sons and on the thumbs of their right hands and on the great toes of their right feet and throw the rest of the blood against the sides of the altar and you shall take part of the blood that is on the altar hand of the anointed one and sprinkle it on Aaron and his garments and on his sons and his sons garments with him he and his garments shall be whole and his sons and his sons garments with him you shall also take the fat from the ramp and the fat tail and the fat that covers the entrails and the long lobe of the liver and the two kidneys with the fat that is on them and the right thigh and one loaf of bread and one cake of bread made with oil and one wafer out of the basket of unleavened bread that is before the Lord. You shall put all these on the palms of Aaron and on the palms of his son and wave them for a wave offering before the Lord. And you shall take them from their hands and burn them on the altar on top of the burnt offering as a pleasing aroma before the Lord. It is a fruit offering to the Lord. And you shall take the breast of the ram of Aaron's ordination and wave it for a wave offering before the Lord. And it shall be your portion. And you shall consecrate the breast of the wave offering. The offering that is waved from the side of the priest's portion and has contributed from the realm of ordination and from what was Aaron's and his sons. It shall be for Aaron and his sons as a perpetual due from the people of Israel. Create a contribution. It shall be a contribution from the people of Israel from the peace offerings. A contribution to the Lord. The holy garments of Aaron shall be for his sons after, and they shall be anointed in them and ordained in them. The son who succeeds him as priest who comes into the tent of meeting to minister in the holy place shall wear them seven days. He shall take the ram of ordination and boil its flesh in a holy place, and Aaron and his son shall eat the flesh of the ram and the bread that is in the basket in the entrance of the tent of meeting. And he shall eat those things with which atonement was made at their ordination and consecration, and outside shall not eat of them. Either them, because they are holy, and if any of the flesh of the ordin for the ordination or, for, or of the bread remain into the morning, and they shall burn the foot remainder with fire, it shall not be eaten, because it is holy. Thus you shall do to Aaron and to his sons, according to all that I have commanded you. First, through seven days you shall already ordain them, and every day you shall offer a bull as a sin offering for atonement. As soon as you shall purify the altar, when you make atonement for it, and shall anoint it to consecrate it. Seven days you shall make atonement for the altar and consecrate it, and the altar shall be most holy. Whoever touches the altar shall become holy. Now this is what you shall offer on the altar. Two lambs a year, or day by day, regularly. One lamb you shall offer in the morning, and two, the other lamb you shall offer, offer at twilight. And with the first lamb, a tenth measure of the fine flour mixed with a fourth of a hin of beaten oil, and a fourth of a hin of wine for a drink offering. The other lamb you shall offer at twilight, and shall offer with it a grain offering and its drink offering, as in the morning. For, for a pleasant room, a food offering to the Lord, it shall be a regular burnt offering throughout your generations at the entrance of the tent meeting before the Lord. 
and I'll meet with you to speak to you there. There I'll meet with the people of Israel, and shall be sanctified by my glory, and I'll consecrate the tent of meeting with in the altar. And Asher and his sons I'll consecrate to serve me as priests. And I will dwell among the people of Israel, and will be their God. And they shall know that I am the Lord their God, who brought them out of the land of Egypt, that I might dwell among them. I am the Lord their God. And I shall make an altar on which to burn incense. You shall make of it e acacia wood. A cubit shall be its length, and a cubit its breadth. And it shall be square, and two cubits shall be its height. Its horn shall be of one piece with it. You shall overlay it with pure gold, its top and around its sides, and its horns. And you shall make a mold of golden ring. And you shall make two golden rings for it, and it's molded on two opposite sides. And you shall make them, and they shall be holders for poles with which to carry it. You shall make the poles of acacia wood and overlay them with gold. And you shall put it in front of the veil that is above the ark of the testimony, in front of the mercy seat that is above the testimony, where I will meet with you. And Aaron shall burn fragrant incense on it. Every morning when he dresses the lamb, shall he shall burn it. And when Aaron sets up the lamp at twilight, he shall burn it, a regular incense offering. Therefore the Lord throughout your generations, he shall not offer an unauthorized incense on it, or a burnt offering, or a grain offering, and he shall not pour a drink offering on it. Aaron shall make atonement on his horns once a year. With the blood of the sin offering of the atonement, he shall make atonement for it once in the year throughout your generations. It is most holy to the Lord. The Lord said to Moses, when you take the census of the people of Israel, and each shall give a ransom for his life to the Lord when you number them, that there be no plague among them when you number them. Each one who is numbered in the census shall give this, half a shekel according to the shekel of the sanctuary, half a shekel as an offering to the Lord. Everyone who is numbered in the census from twenty years old and upward uh, shall give the Lord's offering. The rich shall not give more, and the poor shall not give less than the half shekel. And you give them the Lord's offering to make atonement for your lives. You shall take the atonement and money from the people of Israel, and you shall give for the service of the tent of meeting, and that it may bring the people of Israel to remembrance before the Lord, uh, so as to make atonement for your lives. Uh, the Lord said to Moses, You shall also make a basin of bronze, with a stand of bronze for washing. You shall put it between the tent of meeting and the altar, and you shall put water in it, with, in it, with which Aaron and his son shall wash their hands and their feet. When they go into the tent of meeting, tent of meeting, or when they come near to the altar to minister, to burn a fruit offering to them, they shall wash with water, so that they may not die. They shall wash their hands and their feet. Uh, so that they may not die. You shall be a statue forever to them, even to him and to his offspring throughout their generations. The Lord said to Moses, Take the finest spices, of liquid myrrh, fifty shekels, and of sweet smelling cinnamon, half as much, that is 250 and 250 of aromatic cane, and 50 of cassia, according to the shekel of the sanctuary, and a hand of olive oil, and you shall make of these a sacred offering, Anointing oil, blend it as by the perfume. It shall be a holy anointing oil, and with it you shall anoint the tummy, and the ark of the testimony, and the table, and all its utensils, and the lampstand, and all its and its utensils, and the altar of incense, and the altar of burnt offering with all its utensils, and the basin and its stand. You shall consecrate them, that they may be much holy. Whatever touches them will become holy. You shall anoint Aaron and his sons and consecrate them, that they may serve me as priests. And you shall say to the people of Israel, This shall be my holy anointing oil throughout your generation. And you shall not be poured on the body of an ordinary person, and you shall make no other like it in composition. It is holy, and it shall be holy to you. Whoever compounds any like it, or whoever puts any of it on an outside, shall be cut off from his people. The Lord said to Moses, Take sweet spice, stacked and on each other, and galbanum, sweet spices with pure frankincense, and make an incense blended as by the perfume. <clears throat> Season with salt, pure and holy. You shall beat some of it, very small, and put part of it beside, and put part of it before the testimony in the tent of meeting, where I shall meet, where I shall meet, meet with you. It shall be most holy to the Lord. It shall be most holy for you, and the incense that you make according to its composition, you shall not make for yourself. It shall be for you holy to the Lord. Whoever makes my any like to it, to use this perfume, shall be cut off from his people. The Lord said to Moses, See, I have called by my name, by the love of Son of Yuri, son of her, of the tribe of Judah, and I have filled him with the Spirit of God. 
and with some ability and intelligence, with knowledge and craftsmanship, to devise artistic designs, to work in egg, gold, silver, and bronze, in cutting stones, in cutting stones for setting, and in cutting work to work in every craft. And behold, I have anointed it in him, appointed with him Oli, Aholiah, the son of Ahisamach, and of the tribe of Dan. And I have given to all able men ability that they make the that they make all that I have commanded you, the ten of me, and the ark of the testament, and the mercy seat that is on it, and all the furnishings of the tent, and the chamber and its utensils, and the pure lampstand with all its utensils, and the altar of incense, and the altar of burnt offering with all its utensils, and the basin and the stake, and the fire and the work of garments, the holy garments of Aaron the priest, and the garments of his sons, and for their service as priest, and the anointing oil and the fragrant incense for the holy place. According to all that I have commanded you, they shall do. And the Lord said to me, You speak to the people of Israel and say, Above all, you keep my Sabbath. Lord, this is a sign between me and you throughout your generations, that you may know that I, the Lord, sanctify you. You shall keep the Sabbath, because it is holy for you. No one who profanes it shall be put to death. Whoever does any work on it, that shall all shall be cut off from among his people. Six days shall work be done. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of solemn rest, holy to the Lord. Six days shall work be done. But whoever does my work on the Sabbath shall be put to death. Mm-hmm. And therefore the people of Israel shall keep the Sabbath, observing the Sabbath throughout their generations as a covenant forever. It is a sign forever between me and the people of Israel that in six days the Lord made the heaven and earth. And on the seventh day he rested and was refreshed. And he gave to Moses when he had finished speaking with him on Mount Sinai the two tablets of the testimony, tablets of stand written with the finger of God. And the people saw that Moses had delayed to come, come down from the land. The people gathered themselves from together to Amos, our makers, gods, who shall go before us. And as for this Moses, the many brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we do not know what has become of him. So Aaron said to him, Aaron said to them, Take off the rings of God that are in the ears of the wife, your wives, your sons, and your daughters, and bring them to me. So the people, all the people took off the rings of God that were in their ears and brought them to Aaron. And then he received the gold from the land, from the hand and fashioned it with a grave and fashioned it with a graving tool and made a golden calf. And they said, These are your gods, where is our who brought you up from the land of Egypt land of Egypt. And then Aaron saw this he built an altar before it, and Aaron made a proclamation and said, Tomorrow shall be a feast of them. And they rose up early the next day and offered burnt offerings and brought peace offerings. And the people sat there to eat and drink and visit to play. And the Lord said to Moses, Go down for your people, whom you have brought up out of the land of Egypt, and have brought them with them. They have turned aside quickly in all the way that I commanded them. They have made for themselves a golden calf, and they worshipped it and sacrificed it to it, and said, You see your gods of Israel who have brought you up from the land of Egypt. And the Lord said to Moses, I have seen this people, and behold, it is a stiff necked people. Now therefore let me alone, that my wrath may burn hot against them, and that I may consume them. And she, in order that I may make a great nation of you, the most important of the Lord, that the Lord has gotten to say, the Lord, why does your wrath burn hot against your people, whom you brought out of the land of Egypt with great power and with a mighty hand? And why should the Egyptians say, with evil intent did you bring them out to kill them in the mountains, and in the mountains, and to consume them on the face of the earth? Turn from your burning anger and relent from this disaster against your people. Remember Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, his servants, to whom you swore by your own self, and said to them, I will multiply your offspring as the star of the heaven, and all this land that I promise I will give to your offspring, and they shall inherit it forever. And the Lord relented from the disaster that he had spoken of bringing to all his people. And Moses returned and went down from the mountain with the two tablets of the testimony in the chair, tablets that were written on both sides. On the front and on the back they were written. And the tablets were the work of God, and the writing was the writing of God, engraved on the tablets. When Joshua heard the noise of the people as they shouted, he said to Moses, There is a noise of war in the camp. And they said, It is not the sound of shouting for victory, nor the sound of cry of the defeat, but the sound of saying that I hear. And as soon as he came near the camp and saw the calf and the dancing, Moses' anger, Moses' anger burned hot, and he threw the tablets out of his hand and broke them at the foot of the mountain. He took the coffer they had made and burned it with fire and ground it to powder and scattered on it, scattered it on the water and made the people of Israel drink it. And Moses said to Aaron, Why did, what did this people do to you that you have brought such a great sin upon them? And Aaron said, Let not the anger 
of my lord ben Hur. You know the people, they are set on evil. And when they said to me, Make us gods who shall go before us. As for this most, the man who brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we did not know what has become of him. So I said to them, Let any who have gold take it off. So they gave it to me, and I threw it into the fire. And I threw it into the fire, and out came this calf. And when Moses saw that the people had broken loose, and Moses stood in the gate of the camp and said, For this Lord the Lord's son come to me. And all the sons of Levi gathered around him. And he said, Thus says the Lord God of Israel, For you sword on your side, each of you, and go to and fro from gate to gate throughout the camp. And each of you kill his brother and his companion and his neighbor. And the sons of Levi did according to the word of Moses. And that day about three thousand men of the people fell. And Moses said, Today you have been ordained for the service of the Lord, each one at the cost of his son and of his brother, so that he might bestow a blessing upon you this day. The next day Moses said to the people, You have sent a great sin, and now I will go up to the Lord. Perhaps I can make a time in it for you thus soon. And Moses returned to the Lord and said, Alas, this people has sinned a great sin. They have made for themselves gods of gold, but now if you will forgive their sin, but if not, please blot me out of your book that you have written, that the Lord said to Moses, Let my sin against me, I will blot out of my book. Let go, and I will go, lead the people to the place about which I have spoken to. <clears throat> Help, my angel shall go before you. Nevertheless, in the day when I visit, I will visit their sin upon them. And the Lord sent a plague on the people, because they made their calf, the one that Adam made. The Lord said to Moses, Go, depart, go off from here, and you and the people whom you have brought up out of the land of Egypt, to the land of which I swore to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, saying, To your offspring I will give it. I will send an angel before you, and I will drive out the Canaanites, the Amorites, the Hittites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. Go up to a land flowing with milk and honey. Now I will not go up among you, lest I consume you, lest I consume you on the way. For you are stiff-necked people. When the people heard this disastrous word, they met, and no one put on this ornament. For the Lord had said to me, Say to the people of Israel, You are stiff-necked people, for if for a single man I should go up from among you, I would consume you. So I now take up your ornament, that I may know what to do it. I see. Therefore, the people of Israel stripped themselves of their ornaments from Mount Horeb on. Now Moses used to take the tent and pitch it outside the camp, far off from the camp, and he called it the tent of meeting. And everyone who sought the Lord would go out to the tent of meeting, which was outside the camp. Whenever Moses went out to the tent, all the people would rise up, and each would stand at his tent door, and Moses until and watch Moses until he had gone into the tent. And Moses entered the tent. A pillar of the cloud would descend and stand at the entrance of the tent. And the Lord would speak with Moses, when all the people saw the pillar of cloud standing at the entrance to the tent. All the people would rise up and worship, even at his tent door. And as thus the Lord used to speak to Moses face to face. And as a man speaks to his friend, when Moses turned again into his camp, his assistant Joshua, as a son of Nun, and the young men would not depart from the tent. Then Moses said to the Lord, See, you say to me, Bring up this people, but you have not let me know whom you will send with me. Yet you have said, I know you by name, and you have found this, have found favour in my sight. And therefore, if I have found favour in your sight, please show me now your ways, and I may know you in order to find favour in your sight. And say to you that this nation is your people. And he said, My presence it will not go with you. Might not go with me. Do not bring that stuff from here. Now, how shall it be known that I found favor in your sight and in your people? It's not in your going with us, and know that we are distinct, and in your people, near from every other people on the face of the earth. And the Lord said to me, This very thing that you have spoken, I'll do. Will you find favor in my sight? And I know you by name. Moses said, Please show me your glory. And he said, I'll make all my goodness pass before you, and will proclaim before you my name, the Lord. And I will be gracious to him, I will be gracious to him, I will be gracious, and I will show mercy on him, I will show mercy. But, you can, he said, you cannot see my face, for man cannot see me and live. And the Lord said, Behold, there is a place by me where where you shall stand on the rock, and while my glory passes, I will put you in the cleft of the rock, and I will cover you with my hand until I have passed by. And then I will take away my hand, and you shall see my back, but my face shall not be seen. And the Lord said to me, Cut for yourself two tablets of stone just like the first. And I'll write on the tablets the words that were on the first tablets, which you broke. And you ready by the one, and come up in the morning to Mount Sinai, and present yourself there to me on the top of the mountain. But no one shall come up with you, and let no one be seen throughout all the mountain. Yet no flocks or herds graze opposite that mountain. So he made cut two tablets of stone like the first. And he rose early in the morning and went up on Mount Sinai, as the Lord had commanded him, and took in his hand two tablets of stone. And the Lord descended in the cloud and stood with him there. 
and I proclaim the name of the Lord. And the Lord passed before him and proclaimed, The Lord, the Lord, the God of merciful and gracious, slow to anger, and abandoning his steadfast love and faithfulness, keeping steadfast love for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin. And I will by no means clear the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers and of the children and the children's children, to the third and the fourth generation. And those who quickly bowed his head toward the earth and worship. And he said, If no one you found favor in your sight, then the Lord, please let the Lord go in the midst of us. Where is the stiff neck people? And pardon our iniquity and our sin, and take us for your inheritance. And he said, Behold, I am making a covenant. And I have formed all your people, I will do marvels, such as the hand of me not being created in all the earth or in any nation. And all the people among whom you are shall see the work of the Lord. For it is an awesome thing that I will do with you. And observe what I command this you this day. Behold, I will drive up. I will drive out before you the Amorites, the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. Take care, lest you make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land to which you go, lest it become a snare in your midst. You shall tear down their altars and break their pillars and cut down their ashram, lest you make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land. And when they whore after their gods and sacrifice to their gods and you and life, you give a sacrifice, and you take of their daughters for your sons, and their daughters who whore after their gods, and make of your sons who whore after their gods. You shall not make for yourself any gods cast metal. You shall keep the feast of unleavened bread. Seven days you shall eat unleavened bread, as I commanded you. At the time of in the month of Abib, during the month Abib, you came up and out of Egypt. No longer open the womb on mine, or your male livestock, the first one cow and sheep. The firstborn of a donkey you shall redeem with the lamb, and if you are not redeeming, you shall break its neck. Or the firstborn of the son you shall redeem, and none shall appear before me empty handed. Six days you shall work, but on the seventh day you shall rest. In plowing time and in harvest you shall rest. You shall observe the feast of weeks, the first fruits of wheat harvest, and the feast of in gathering at the year's end. Three times in the year shall all your males appear before the Lord God, the God of Israel. And I will cast out nations before you and enlarge your borders. No one shall covet your land when you go up to appear before the Lord your God three times in the year. You shall not offer the blood of my sacrifice with anything leaven. Will let the sacrifice of the feast of the Passover remain until the morning. The best of the first fruits of your ground you shall bring to the hands of the Lord your God. You shall not boil a younger in his mother's milk. And the Lord said to Moses, By these words, for in accordance with these words, I made a covenant with you and with Israel. He said, He was there with the Lord forty days and forty nights. He neither ate bread nor drank water, and he wrote on the tablets the words of the covenant, the Ten Commandments. And Moses came down from the Mount Sinai with the two tablets of the testimony. His hands, he came down from the mountain. Moses did not know that the skin of his face shone because he had been talking with God. Aaron and all the people of Israel saw Moses, and behold, the skin of his face shone, and they were afraid to come near him. And Moses called to them, and Aaron and all the leaders of the congregation returned to him, and Moses talked with them. Afterward, all the people of Israel came near, and he commanded them all that the Lord had spoken with him on Mount Sinai. And when Moses had finished speaking with them, he put a veil over his face. Whenever Moses went in before the Lord to speak with him, he would remove the veil until he came out. And when he came out and told the people of Israel what he was commanding, the people of Israel would see the face of Moses, that the skin of Moses' face was shining. And Moses would put the veil over his face until he went in to speak with him. Proverbs 12 Whoever loves discipline loves not, for he who hates reproof is stupid. A good man obtains favor from the Lord, but a man of evil devices he condemns. No one is established by wickedness, but the root of the righteous will never be moved. An excellent wife is the crown of her husband, but she who brings shame is like rotten sin's bones. The thoughts of the righteous are just, and the counsels of the wicked are deceitful. The words of the wicked lie in way for blood, but the mouth of the upright delivers them. The wicked are overthrown and are no more. But the house of the righteous will stand, and man is commanded according to his good sense. But one of twisted mind is the slice. Better to be lowly and have a servant than to pray the great man and lack bread. Whoever is righteous has a look after the life of the beast, and at the mercy of the wicked is called. Whoever works his land will have plenty of bread, and he who follows worthless pursuits like sense. Whoever is wicked can rest the spoil of evil laws, but the root of the righteous bears fruit. And he who is ensnared by the transgression of his lips, that the righteous escapes from trouble. From the fruit of his mouth, a man is satisfied with good, and the work of his man's hand comes back to him. The way of a fool is right in his own eyes, and that a wise man listens to advice. The vexation of a fool is known at once, but the prudent of the Lord is so. Whatever speaks the truth gives on his evidence, but a false witness others to see. And there's one whose rash words are like sword thrust, but the tongue of the wise brings healing. She who lives in joy forever, but a lying tongue is but for a moment. To see and in the heart of those who devise evil, but those who plan peace have joy. They are ill before the righteous, but the lip wicked are filled with trouble. Night lips are an abomination to the Lord, but those who act faithfully are 
The prayer man sent you a with the heart of the fool was proclaimed folly. The hand of the diligent will rule, while the slothful will be put to full slave. Anxiety in a man's heart weighs him down, but a real prayer makes him glad. One who is righteous is a guide to his neighbor, but the way of the wicked leads him astray. I mean, a slothful will outrace his gain, but the diligent man will get precious wealth. In part, the righteousness is life, and in his pathway there is no death. Psalm 105. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, call upon his name, make known the deeds among the people, sing to him, sing praise to him, tell all, all his wondrous works, glory in his holy name, with hearts of those who seek the Lord, rejoice, seek his presence continually, remember the wondrous works that he has done, his miracles, and the judgments he uttered, the offspring of Abraham, the children of Jacob, his chosen ones, he is the Lord our God, his judgments are in all the earth, he remembers his covenant forever, the word that he commanded for a thousand generations, the covenant that he made with Abraham, his sworn promise to Isaac, which he confirmed to Jacob as a statue, to Israel as an everlasting covenant, saying, to you I will give the land of Canaan as your portion for an inheritance. Where they will vary in number of little cats, who joins them, wandering from nation to nation, and from one kingdom to another people, he allowed no one to oppress them. He rebuked kings on their account, saying, Touch not my own land to us, do my prophets no harm. And then he summoned a famine on the land, and broke all supply of bread. And he sent a man ahead of them, Joseph, who was sold as a slave. His feet were hurt with feathers, and he was put in a collar by. And until one year so came to pass. And what if the Lord tested him? The king sent him and released him. And the rules of the people will set him free. He made him lord of his house and lord of all his possessions. He bind his princes at his pleasure and to teach his elders wisdom. Then Israel came to Egypt and Jacob sojourned in the land of Ham. The Lord made people very fruitful and um, made them stronger than their friends. He turned their hearts to hate his people, to deal craftily with the servants. He sent Moses' servant and Aaron, whom he had chosen. And he performed the signs among the men, miracles of the land of Ham. He sent darkness and made the light, made the land dark. They did not rebel against his words. So he turned their waters into blood and caused their fish to die. And then they swallowed the frogs, even in the chambers of the king, he smoked. And there came swarms of flies and gnashed throughout their country. He gave them hail for rain and fiery lightning bolts through their land. He struck down their mines and fig trees. He shattered the trees of their country. He spoke and locusts came. Came young locusts without number, who to devour all the vegetation in the land, and ate of the fruit of the earth. He struck down all the first corn in the land, the first fruits of all the land. Then he brought out Israel with silver and gold, and there was none among his tribes who stumbled. Egypt was glad when they departed, for dread of them had fallen upon him. He spread a cloud for recovery and fire to give light by night. He asked, and they brought quail, and he gave them bread from heaven in abundance. He they opened the rock, and the water gushed out. He had flowed from the desert like a river, for he remembered his holy promise and Abraham's son. So he brought out his people out with joy. His chosen ones were sick, and he gave them the lands of the nations, and they took possession of the fruit of the people's toil, that they might keep his statues and observe his laws. Praise the Lord. Now this done, as you now did the Lord's prayer, please pray ahead, so Father in heaven, and let the old your kingdom come, you will be drawn on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and give us our debts, as you have given our debts. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Give us the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. See you tomorrow. Bye.